What's up guys, Eric Barry Vita here, and today I'm bringing you a very special and different video, which is why there's bad lighting, bad hair, bad audio. Uh, this is going to be the first in a series that you guys have been asking for for a year and a half. Uh, my wife and I have done some cooking in this kitchen together. We've brought you guys the video footage from that time. We've talked about what we do uh, to cook certain ways or to wrap presents and that kind of thing. And I've been asking my wife for a year and a half to start making this series. And because generally she's cooking on her own and taking care of a baby and now a puppy and she's pregnant, it's kind of tough for her to do this series. But luckily, today I've got Cam Black who is one of my Minecraft, uh, Minecraft, Minecraft admins and also one of my YouTube editors. He does a ton of work for me. Really, really amazing guy. He and his buddy are over here right now, so they're gonna film. So, hi guys. Nice to see you. It's kind of weird now. But, uh, <laughs> you can't see me without anyone. <laughs> Regardless, tonight we're gonna make some, uh, some pasta. This is one of my favorite, favorite things, one of my favorite recipes I've ever made. And uh, it's a little bit crazy because it's not what you'd think of when you think of making some spaghetti and, and meat and stuff. So we're going to start things off with a ton of meat because we're going to brown it all up so I can use it in other dishes later. And uh, yeah, I'll walk you guys through the recipes. The full recipe is going to be in the description below. But uh, enjoy this kind of cantankerous, savory, and ridiculously spicy uh, spaghetti shenanigans. Alright, so first and foremost guys, i got a little bit of olive oil. I'm going to add a little bit more olive oil in here. I'm heating my pan up really hot because I've got some fresh garlic cloves. And if you guys have ever cooked with fresh garlic cloves, one of the biggest challenges you have is trying to get this stupid wrapper off just right so you don't have the ball apart on you, etc. So we're just gonna throw them all in here. As many as we want, I guess I'll use four cloves for now. This is just for the meat. And uh, I'm actually gonna let this heat up for just a minute. And once it browns, I'll flip it over, brown the other side of it, and that helps it come apart easily. I'll show you how. <laughs> say hi. Hi, hi people. Hi, hi friends. Bye-bye. <laughs> no, say hello. Hi, hi friends. friends. <laughs> Mama, how you feeling? Good. Awesome since I'm not making dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I told everybody that this is this is the idea that people had for you, so you're gonna have to start doing this too. Oh shoot! In my free time. In all your free time. I know. <laughs> when you're when you're not eating bonbons, you know. Exactly. Bonbons. Where do you think this gut came from? Hey. -o. All right, so as with everything else, we want to always, always have the right tools for the job. Pretty easy to do, first and foremost. Peel an onion, that's not too hard, but you want to have a nice sharp knife. Easy way to peel if it's starting to stick like that. Cut the tip off just like so. That is what she said. And here we go with our onion almost ready to cut the other side off. No more onion skin. And then as with any kind of cutting, we're going to be real smooth with this, real cautious making sure that we do not cut ourselves by using our fingernails down and using a big chef's knife so we have massive amounts of control. Now I'm not going fast here because, well, I'm not that great of a knife skill guy, but I'm trying and uh, a little bit of onion for our meat to season the meat is crucial. All right, so now that we have these nicely brown on each side, we're gonna take our, our knife, one little press, one little press, and then these come right off really easily. The whole skin easily off, and it leaves this. We don't want to press too hard so it doesn't crush it, but it leaves the, the garlic in great condition, as you'll see here. And uh, much, much, much easier than sitting there fighting it. Plus, you get a nice roast flavor, which is uh, delicious. You get a nice little bit of brown on there, nice and roasted, like a boss. So we got four cloves now. We'll mince these up nice and small as well. We got the beef in here on top of the onions, cook it down. And we're going to salt and pepper this pretty liberally because I actually like the meat to carry most of the flavor of the sauce. So people who like stuff that's not as seasoned don't have to uh, eat, the, eat the meat. They can actually eat around the, the spiciness of it all. So we're going to add a few more seasonings here. we got some black pepper. we got some salt. we got some red pepper. We're going to throw a few more little seasonings on here that you may not have heard of. Cavender's Greek seasoning. Really delicious. Mainly because it has a little bit of MSG in it. Yep, that's right. Cancer in a can. Gotta love it. Little Tony's Italian seasoning right here, or Creole seasoning. And then a few more ingredients I'll show you in just a sec. Great ingredients for the best darn thing you can have. One is going to be sriracha. This is hot chili sauce. And if you guys have never cooked with this stuff before, it is delicious on everything. Not too much, just a little bit of sprinkle there on top. Because it is nice and spicy. That also has a sweetness. The next two will surprise you. Nutmeg and cinnamon. Believe it or not, on red meat. Really delicious. Very light on both of these. You don't want to be too heavy. You use a little more nutmeg than cinnamon. The cinnamon comes across really strong, really fast. So a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of nutmeg, and we should have a nice, nice balance 
to start this thing off. It's fresh rosemary. Next step, this is for both the uh, the sauce itself and a little touch of the meat pasta. We'll see, we don't have much right now, so uh, I love rosemary, I love basil, I love oregano, all those things fresh. Sadly, our, our herb garden is lacking as it is winter time right now. And even in Florida, that means that if you don't water your plants, they die. And because I'm too busy taking care of my things that talk to me that need to be fed, I don't always remember to feed my plants. <laughs> but uh, mince this up nice and tight. I have a few little things to add to this. First and foremost, a little wine or vodka, either one, works really well. It adds a nice little bit of balance to the flavors. Then we're gonna go over here and I'm gonna put some uh, of the rosemary on in there. Once again, a little bit of salt, pepper. I like black pepper, white pepper, and red pepper when possible. Splash more nutmeg. And uh, we'll do all that we can to keep these flavors pretty simple. There's a little red pepper for us. Not too spicy, we don't want to go overboard on it, but uh, enough. And the red sauce is actually just some really basic red sauce from the store. It's just a, a meat sauce. Uh, I buy whatever's on sale. I know that sounds silly and cheap, but it's what I do. And here, because uh, I like to get picky, I'm gonna use a little kosher salt, just so I can kind of see the amount of texture I'm adding to it. And that should be plenty of salt. So uh, from here, we'll add the meat to it later. Uh, we'll actually, I'm gonna cut one more onion and some garlic to put in here as well, but uh, it's pretty much ready to rock and roll. <laughs> she was tired and she yawned. That's why dogs are better than cats. True story. We're leaving that in the video. <laughs> nice. Mixing it in nice. Simmering this on low heat for a little while to get all the flavors partaken back and forth. And uh, it should be quite delicious when it's all said and done. Things you should always add to your water before you actually start boiling it. One's gonna be about two tablespoons of salt to salt your pasta. The other one, it's about a teaspoon of olive oil or canola oil, and that helps the pasta not stick together. The third item that you can add, which I don't really have enough of right now to add, is a little bit of rosemary or basil, which actually seasons your whole pasta dish. It's delicious. But pasta's going on, the sauce is simmering down to make all the flavors come together like a congealed pot of joy. And I'm gonna pack up the rest of the meat so we have uh, leftovers. Enjoy. Bow ties, because they're delicious and they're fancy. And here's the finished product. We've got some pasta going into a bowl. Why? Because bowls are better. Uh, that's actually not true. I like plates. I, I promise. Plates are okay. Uh, and then we're going to add some pasta sauce and make sure we dig deep to get some of that garlic and onion and meat in there. And uh, finish it all off with some uh, Parmesan cheese. And it should be quite delicious. So, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know if you enjoyed it. Uh, full description down below, full information in the description down below. Uh, this meal will serve four of us twice, so eight people easily with leftovers. Uh, and I think the entire cost of the meal, including pasta, meat, sauce, and everything else, is about $9. So, not bad. Uh, you can actually do it a little bit cheaper if you put less meat in. Cheers. Have a good night. We'll see you guys later. What do you think? Pretty tasty? It's delicious. Delicious? Amazing. Amazing. Best I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. No pressure, man. <laughs> what do you think, babe? So <laughs> <laughs> this is my wife. I married her. It's yummy, honey. You did a great job. You're just happy you didn't have to make it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Cam? So good. So good. Tell the chief. I hate it. <laughs> and she said it's bad. <laughs> no. It's <clears throat> pretty tasty. So good. Yeah, it actually it came out pretty well. And uh, again, guys, cheap, delicious. And uh, good night. Here's the puppy. Hello, everybody. Don't bite. Hello. <laughs> she's the sweetest dog ever. But she's definitely a puppy. Puppy, puppy, puppy. <laughs>